On Wednesday, we explored why America's students are struggling to rebound from the turbulent era of pandemic schooling, despite billions in government aid. Just take a look at the numbers. Nation's report card shows average reading scores for 13-year-olds are down four points from 2020. Math scores are down nine points. But months before releasing this data, Education Secretary Miguel Cardona warned against taking test scores at face value. We need to recognize once and for all that standardized tests work best when they serve as a flashlight on what works and what needs attention, not as hammers to drive the outcomes from the top down, often pointing fingers to those with greater needs and less resources. So if test scores work best as a flashlight, what's being left in the dark? Let's bring in Dr. Chase Nordengren. He is the principal research lead for effective instructional strategies at NWEA, a K-12 research organization. Thank you so much for being with us. So what are test scores really good at telling us and what gets left out of the story? Well, I think the secretary summed it up well. Test scores are a flashlight on the health of our systems, you know, how schools and districts are doing overall and how individual students are doing across their educational career. What test scores are less good at, what they aren't really designed for, is talking about what students are ready to learn next, what they should be focusing on over the next week or the next month. Uh, I often compare it to using a map. A map of the United States is a very useful tool for a lot of purposes. It doesn't tell you how to get from your home to the grocery store. Um, we have different maps that we use for different purposes. And so how is there a, is there a better way to gauge that um, ability to then move to the next level or that ability to, to move and learn further? Is there a better way than the standard tests we've been using now? Sure. I, you know, I think the standardized tests that we use now are a continual source of information about schools um, and about districts. For individual students, um, teachers have a variety of tools at their disposal, what we often call formative assessments. All of those opportunities throughout the school day and the school week for a teacher to check in to see what a student has understood about that subject, uh, with what they need to understand next, and how their educational experience can be tailored to understand and, and measure what, they're think, what they need to think about moving forward. And as a researcher, how do you factor in, or and is this what you're describing, is it really needs to be kind of look them in the face and have a direct relationship with these students? The, the, the idea of a student's home life, their extracurricular weight on, on them, and just the, the personal idiosyncr idiosyncrasies of students who have varied lives. I think it's a combination of all of the above. So um, certainly those test scores give us uh, a metric of, around which to compare students. And one of the things researchers often do is try to compare students in similar circumstances. So from similar demographics and life histories, um, those formative assessments that I me mentioned are another way to measure where students are and what they're doing. A third thing that we do that's really important is to focus not only on achievement, where students are, but on growth, how much students have learned over the course of a period of time. And research has routinely shown that while students come into school at a variety of achievement levels, all students can grow and all students can grow to exceptional levels. We are in this challenging moment in the post-pandemic uh, period. What, what might uh, our strategies look like to help with those un unique challenges? We don't always go through a pandemic. Um, that would that would address the the real setback that occurred during that period. I think the big thing that we've learned is that students are coming into a particular grade level um, all over the place in terms of what their academic experience is, what they're ready for, and so that old model of schooling where we all sit in rows and we all learn the same thing at the same time really isn't suited for our current reality. Um, research that our organization and I have done have shown that schools are succeeding where teachers take advantage of all of the tools that educational technology provide and all of these formative assessment tools to tailor instruction to individual students, to give each individual student the exact activity that they need in the moment to ensure they can learn as much as they can. Dr. Chase Nordengren, Principal Research Lead at NWEA. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks, John.